All a technician needs to accurately measure airflow is a magnahelic gauge and two static pressure probes. All of these are made by Dwyer Company and are readily available. The static pressure probes are very handy in that they have a magnetic base. So simply drill a hole in your ductwork for the probe to fit through, the magnet will suck it up right to the ductwork, sealing it off and giving you accurate readings. Always face the point of the probe into the direction where the airflow is coming from. Three little holes is all it's going to take. In no time at all we'll have the access ports that we need to do accurate airflow testing. We'll put one above the coil, one below the coil, and one on the return air side. And all we need is a drill with a 3 8 drill bit. You will have to use your experience to learn where to drill your holes so that you don't hit any vital components. A good place on this brand of furnace is right here in the back like we've shown previously with the probe facing down because the airflow is coming this way. If we had moved over a little bit towards the middle that would not be as good a location. We could go in the side like so and that would be a good location as well. So you'll just have to learn your equipment but you need this probe to be below the evaporator coil. Now we've drilled our 3 8 inch hole. It was just that fast and easy. As you can see, our static pressure probe fits through easily and the magnet sucks it right up to it. When we're done measuring airflow, we can plug the hole with a plastic plug for 3 8 or what a readily available material is thumb gum. Both do a good job of sealing and you can remove it easily later if you ever want to take another reading. Here are the locations of the two static pressure probes. One immediately after the blower and one immediately before. The blower fan will generate a positive pressure of one half inch water column. The low pressure tap on the magnahelic gauge connects to the low pressure area on the intake side of the blower. The high pressure tap on the magnahelic is connected here after the blower. The fan on this unit will produce half an inch of static pressure across its blower. Let's begin by putting the system into the cooling mode. As you can see, the magnahelic gauge is registering 0.5 inches of water column total external static pressure. This equates to 1200 CFM of airflow on this unit. Let's look at the blower performance chart for this unit.
We have the model numbers, the blower size of the wheels, the motor horsepower, the four speeds that can be connected, and then here we have the CFM of airflow at total external static pressure of 0.1 all the way up to 0.7. These blowers are rated at 0.5 inches of total external static pressure. As the static pressure rises above that, our airflow starts to fall off. We have on high speed 1110 CFM. If we can lower the static pressure, our airflow increases. For example, at 0.3 inches of water column, we have 1210 CFM. We've gained exactly 100 CFM by dropping the total external static pressure from 0.5 to 0.3. Now we'll simulate a more restrictive duct system by slowly closing off the area of the plenum. As you can see, the static pressure rises dramatically and noise increases. To measure pressure drop through the evaporator coil, simply move the pressure tap that's on the return side of the fan and reposition it after the evaporator coil, like so. Now you're ready to take a pressure drop through the evaporator coil. This is another way of measuring airflow. As you can see, the gauge is registering 0.1 inches of water column, which equates to 1200 CFM of airflow on this evaporator coil. Here's a spec sheet published by the manufacturer of this brand of evaporator coils. Let's take a look inside for the information contained there. Looking inside, we can see that this manufacturer has conveniently provided a pressure drop chart showing air flows at various pressure drops through their coil. These are very accurate and we can use these in the field to make accurate measurements of air flow with our magnahelic gauge. Let's take a little closer look. Here's the chart published by this manufacturer of evaporator coils. In it they have indicated the various pressure drops that occur at various CFMs for different sizes of coils. The coil we have just measured is a two and a half ton coil in a seventeen and a half inch cabinet. As you recall, the pressure drop we measured was 0.1 inches of water column. All we have to do is connect the two intersecting lines of this upflow coil and we find that the CFM that the manufacturer has accurately determined at 0.1 inches of water column is 1113 CFM. I repeat it's important to know what size cabinet that coil is installed in because that same three ton coil can be seen here in a 21 inch cabinet and at 0.1 inches of water column we have 1299 CFM. The bigger plenum means that we flow more air. So you need to know your coil, your plenum size, and your pressure drop to get your accurate airflow measurement. Now looking at the chart you see that the increments of pressure drop are spaced out. What if your measurement doesn't come out exactly the way the chart shows. For example, what if our measurement was 0 0.09 inches of water column? That would be somewhere between 0.05 and 0.1. What would the CFM be? This is important because we would not want 1113 CFM of airflow through a two and a half ton coil, for example. A little bit of easy math is all we need to do to answer that question. We know that the chart said that at 0.1 inches of water column, 
the coil was flowing 1113 CFM. We want to know what the CFM would be represented by X when the pressure drop is 0 0.09 inches of water column. As you'll remember from math class, to solve equations like this, you simply cross multiply 0.1 times x, 1013 times 0 0.09. The result of cross multiplying is 0.1x equals 100.17. The next step is to divide both sides by 0 0.10. This will leave x all by itself on this side. So in doing that, we put 0 0.10 into 100.17, leaving x all by itself on this side, and the answer being 1001.7. We can round that off to a simple answer of 1002 CFM. By solving this simple little math equation, we can now say that this coil at 0 0.09 inches of water column pressure drop has an airflow of 1002 cubic feet per minute. Perfect for a two and a half ton coil. Notice that the chart says that the pressure drop measurement should be taken through a wet cooling coil. This means that the measurement should be taken after the system has been running for 10 or 15 minutes so that the coil is wet and covered with condensate. This will affect the reading and the accuracy of the measurement. The coil we are measuring today is not typical. It's a very efficient coil and very friendly to airflow. These pressure drops are not typical for our industry. They're very low. That's one of the advantages of this brand of coil. You will typically find these numbers to be higher. You will seldom see numbers this low. Numbers tend to be in the range of 0.25 up to 0.35 inches of water column. Here is the pressure drop chart for another model of coil. This is much more representative of what you will see in the field. As you can see, the pressure drops are much higher, 0.25 inches of water column at 800 CFM, or the coil that we were comparing it to, a 1200 CFM coil. As you can see, pressure drops 0 0.36, 0 0.31, three times higher what we saw with the former coil. An electronic manometer is an alternative to a magnahelic gauge. It does the same thing. It has the same two ports, high and low, but it has the advantage of having a much wider range and digital accuracy to one hundredth of an inch of water column. So it can do more tasks besides just measuring static pressure. It costs a little bit more, but you may find that it's well worth it. Watch this website for more videos and podcasts on airflow and other technical subjects, all designed to help your technicians grow so that they can please customers, reduce callbacks, and make your company more profitable. This is a service of Design Air University.